technology spectrum. He's also involved with some of the key initiatives of the cutting edge technology related to IE, artificial intelligence, and other new technology. New technology. So, could you talk about some of the key initiatives and how does it impact our society, the element of artificial intelligence that we're talking about every day now? Yeah, good. <coughs> Uh, Department of Science and Technology fundamentally is, you know, to identify new emerging, you know, areas of science and technology and how we can, you know, bring it to in a research front and how we can develop as a technology and adopt within the know. This is the entire spectrum of, you know, the R&D uh, translation plus the, what you call the economic connectivity. This is the entire spectrum in which the DST operates. As with the coming to your question about related to the advanced technologies, in fact, you know, recently, you know, that are, uh, December 2018, uh, the government of India has approved one uh, national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems. Now, cyber physical system fundamentally talks about how in cyber world we can interact with the, uh, the physical systems. Either it could be a railway network or it could be a power grid or it could be, you know, transport sector you know, or autonomous vehicles or aerial vehicles, you know, these are all various types of physical infrastructures, how we can control, monitor and, you know, uh, how the things can be done, even robotics also. Now, all these, you know, the uh, technologies which are contributing to the cyber physical system, fundamentally what we are calling it as the foundations of cyber physical system. It all, the, for example, the robotics. Yes. Then we are talking about uh, IoT. They are talking about sensors, the activators, the data science, the visualization, yes. the quantum technologies. Yes. So these are all, you know, the high-end, you know, the time technologies which has a role in realizing the cyber-physical systems. So therefore, it is not that one technology will lead us to this thing. There is a synergization of all these technologies. Well, when you talk about, you know, the synergization of technology, it connects to an application. For example, application uh, agriculture. Agriculture requires both robotics, the aerial survey, then the AS, plus you know the data analytics. The similar type of paradigm is required for medical applications. Yes. For example, you are talking about health for all. Yes. So health for all, if you want to achieve, then we need to have a systems at the you know what you call the PHS level, at the you know district hospitals, but at the you know the national uh, uh, hospitals, yes. plus the bringing the patient with the, you know, what you call the doctor through the technologies. Okay, so these are all various kinds of application that CPS will roll out actually. I want to understand, India has taken a lead of course, you know, in information technology. Mm. But these are the, within the information technology, these are the advanced initiative. Mm. It's happening worldwide. In fact, it's evolving every minute, every hour. Yes. Where we are now in terms of these advanced technology, as you say, robotics, the applications of, of artificial intelligence, where do we are now at the moment? Well, uh, perfectly if you uh, look at you know the entire paradigm of the you know the international scenario, uh, if you put it in the 10 point scale, probably we are at 3 or 4. Some of the economies may be at 6 or 7. Now it is emerging. More or less we are at par with them. But one uh, advantage for those advanced economies, they have the you know what you call ecosystems created already. Yes. See, any new uh, technology comes up, they can rapidly develop and roll out the products. Yes. Now, we are lacking behind in that actually. But we are quickly gaining you now that uh, momentum yes. and probably we will be at par with them. For example, I will take just an example of quantum technologies. Yes. Throughout the entire world is as of now more or less equal. There is no quantum supremacy as achieved. Recently, IBM has not announced. When you talk about the quantum communication, some countries have demonstrated but not the full quantum communication. Similarly, quantum uh, computing. So, we are at par. Yes. But the world is changing very fast. Every day the things are happening. So, therefore, we need to have internal systems in place so that we can, uh, will not lose this opportunity. And then, you know, again we go for this. So, so, being part of science and technology, you are sort of guardian for such technology. Mm -hmm. How much we spend on the research and development as far as the government of India is concerned? What is our percentage compared to the say, country like China, which is spending huge 15% of the total budget? What is your take on that? Uh, my call on this is, uh, now see, there is a changing ecosystems. Earlier, the role of a Department of Science and Technology was more or less promoting research. 
Okay. Now, as I told, that role has been shifted. Now, we are moving from not only R&D to linking with the economic growth. So, therefore, we need to have what is the company. The coming to the investments, no, uh, the government is doing is, uh, now they are coming out with the missions, national missions. For example, the NM ICPS mission which was referring, it is around 4,000 crores. Yes. And within three months, the government approved say that, okay, go and get rolling it. This is apart from what the, you know, the departmental budget is. Yes. So, this type of missions are coming up, objective oriented, delivery based, time bounded. So, these missions, my quantum mission, they are talking about some uh, 8,000, 9,000 crores. Yes. I mean, maybe another 33 months, it may come out actually. Yes. So, the government is focusing on what you call mission oriented projects and delivery based mechanisms yes. to achieve a targets. Therefore, it is a different type of approach. So, Dr. Muli, you well explained, but now the final part is a conflicting and complex question. Technology is enabler every day, which helps us move ahead, also compete in the world. But how do you see technology, such advanced technology, creating job opportunity in the future or rather diminishing the job opportunity because these are more automated, simply put it across to you. Correct. Now, see, every technology brings in that fear of disruption. The disruption is in terms of the paradigm shift and removing the jobs from the market. When IT was instead, the same type of fear was there with you know, the banking and other sectors. What happened is, one set of skills will go away, but new demand for the new skills will come out. Okay, there is a shifting. Okay, similarly, the AI system or you talk about robotics or automation, all these technologies, initially we may feel that there is an element of, you know, that job, uh, you know, uh, removal is there, but ultimately what I feel is with advanced technology, then more skilled manpower are required, therefore it increases. Of course, in Indian scenario, we have more manpower and what you call, we have to optimize, you know, both the automation plus, you know, the human, how both can work together so that the manufacturing cost could be brought down and achievement could be diminished.